To me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that are shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. Hi, fathers. Good to see you again, mothers, grandparents. Welcome to the World Needs a Father Bringing Home series, Chapter 6. This is the last part, Part 4, on Assuming Disciplinary Responsibility. Part 3, we were looking at developing moral authority in our lives. And from developing moral authority, we want now to look at how we can assume and implement disciplinary responsibility. Let's move on. A quick recap. We were talking earlier uh, in part three about the need to submit to our mentors in all areas of our life. In all the six areas, we're talking about spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, social, environment, and how we need to get our mentors to check on us, on our pride, on the issue of possession and money, on power, on pleasure, so that we always be kept walking in a straight and narrow pathway. Now, a father will have to assume the disciplinary responsibility. It's a, 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 a unique formula. I think came out from Harvard. Uh, a formula about how to go about implementing disciplinary responsibility. It's R plus R minus R squared equals to R plus R. Now, what in the world is all of that? Okay, normally in a group, I'll ask for answers. Those who get it right, I'll treat them to a nice lunch. R plus R is rules plus regulation. I don't talk about R squared. Will lead to rebellion and resistance. I've seen enough. The R squared, when there's no respect, no respectable relationship. In any team, in any organization, people will rebel, people will resist. You can come out with all the rules and regulation at home anywhere, but without the kind of respect given to people, they will rebel, they will resist. So this is one of the important things to take note of. Respectful relationship is so important. With our children, with our wives, if anybody for that matter, for that matter. So in discipline, assuming the discipline, there are two things I would like to talk about, different disciplinary influence and disciplinary values. They are basically, when you talk about discipline, by example, by affirming your child, spiritual discipline, yourself set for the good example of prayer, reading the word, Self-discipline is in the area of learning to be in control of your emotion. Uh, the holistic aspect is that you must be balanced looking at all areas of your life. Collective discipline is allowing others in the community to discipline our child when need to. Corrective is what we will talk about later, about what corrective discipline upon our child is all about. Disciplinary values, as in Hebrews 12, 7 to 11, we talk about the need, always we need to discipline in love. It must always in the spirit of love, care, and not an autocratic, unreasonable leader. Then we need to hold a family conference, whereby together with your wife or husband and wife, set forth the ground rules and values to the entire family to be brief so that they can know the reason why. And the intention of all discipline is that all of us together with our children will grow towards spiritual maturity to become Christ-like in every way. This is the Ruben Hill case study. It is conducted a study of thousands of teens and parents in Minnesota which shows forth four kinds of discipline, four kinds of what I would say for as parenting style in families. And the focus here is in the manner father or the parent exert his authority and his leadership at home. That is that permissive, first one, 
and below you look the neglectful, the authoritarian, and the authoritative. Permissive parenting are parents who do not want to offend the child. The child becomes like a king, which, is, which result in the child actually feeling insecure and things are not the way they want. It is a child-centric parenting when it should be a Christ-centered, Christ-centric parenting. Neglectful parenting is basically fathers are too busy with their own life and that will cause the child to feel forsaken feel neglected, feel abandoned. Authoritative parenting is what you see in the picture. Fierce, critical, down, telling him, follow me or you get it. And it will cause a child actually to rebel, to rebel. Remember we said about respectful relationship. And the last one is authoritative parenting. That's the one that we like all parents to move towards. The parents are fellowship parents. The parents are happy, secure. And when you treat the child that way, the child will feel loved, affirmed. And the child will result feeling very secure and a good sense of self-esteem. So these are the four aspects of the way we discipline or we relate to our child. It's good to know and to take note of. There are 10 basic disciplinary rules that we talk about. I quickly run through the 10. It is to know and understand the child's will. We give different strokes for different child. Are you emotion, emotionally connected with your child in a respectful way? Only say no when, ne when necessary, not just because you feel like it. When you discipline, is to educate, not punish. And do not let the sun go down on your anger when you become out of control. Your discipline must fit the action. Two morning, the third, you have to give up the discipline. Exercise patience when a child is tired. Debrief always in love after the discipline. Pull him back, explain to him why. And the types of discipline, there are many. These are all the four that I most common use. Spanking is the old fashioned approach that some people, some fathers, some parents still believe about spare the rod and spoil the child. Uh, when a child does something wrong, you send him to the room or to the bathroom. What I use very often in my second one is I get him to stand at the corner. If he's three years old, three minutes, four years old, four minutes, and at a maximum when he was five, I use five minutes standing at the corner. It can be very, very uh, painful not to, do, not to go anywhere. And lastly, for teenagers with whole privileges, and all this needs to be done in wisdom. We need to realize your children will become what you are. So be what you want them to be. This is a quote by Frank Pittman. It is very significant. We need to know, fathers, that the guys who fear becoming fathers don't understand that fathering is not something perfect men do, no, but something that perfects the man. The end product of child raising is not the child, but the parent. Isn't it interesting? And I think it's true. We are always in the process of God the Father, the Potter, fine-tuning our life. We are always in the process of becoming more and more like Christ. I want to sum up by saying that we have looked at part one, what moral authority is all about, and it simply means no morals, no authority. We need to walk the talk. Part two, we talk about clarity. After learning what moral authority is all about, we need to be clear of God's assignment for your life. And that part three, we talk about developing moral authority with convictions and with accountability. And today we finish up by assuming and implement moral authority in our lives and to the lives of our children in a humble and servanthood manner. And so the reflective questions for you to take note of will be this. What discipline styles did you grow up with? How did your father discipline you? Which of the four you frequently use? Permissive, neglectful, authoritarian, or authoritative? And the third is significant. That's for, wife, for your wife and you to talk about why do you want the discipline on the first place? What values and approach 
are you and your wife using in your discipline? And are you both on the same page? Not you'll be constantly be in conflict and your child will be using you against each other. So that will prevent that from happening. Thank you very much for listening. See you again. The program is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live enriching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together.